Hello, my name is Pranjal. I'm a senior compositor currently living and working in Toronto. Uh, a couple of weeks back, I posted this video where the camera is going through the street of New York and doing this uh, fancy camera move. I don't remember exactly which street it was, but we'll see in a moment. Uh, so I use Google Earth Studio to create this camera animation. Earth Studio is a browser-based animation project by Google where you can just drop a camera anywhere uh, on the map and do a cinematic camera move with it. Uh, it's super fun to play until um, you are getting uh, close to the imagery. I, I was asked over the internet about how I approach this effect. So in this video, I'll be going through the basic controls of Earth Studio and all the camera features it has. And then we'll be exporting our sequence in Nuke and finishing up by grading it and adding lots of motion blur. Uh, so let's just dive into it. So you can um, use Google Earth Studio by visiting this URL, Google Earth slash Studio. So this is the home page of Google Earth Studio. Uh, to use Google Earth Studio, you will need a access from Google. So you can basically just go in there and sign up for it and fill up your credentials and what you will be using it for and uh, then you will get an email from Google within around 10 days with the access link and then it will be linked to your Google account. I have mine already set up so I'm just gonna go and go ahead and click on try Earth Studio. So the very first thing I see is two options just blank project and open project. Um, you can hold open project click in this button uh, and uh, for this video I'm just gonna take a blank project. First thing I see is I need to set up a name for the project so for this video I'm just gonna say test and uh, so different I have different worlds available so Earth, Moon and Mars uh, I haven't tried these two so so for this for the sake of this video just stick to let's just stick to Earth and uh, then we have dimensions um, I haven't tried going higher than HD but I'm pretty sure there's no limitation on it but for sure if you go higher uh, in resolution it's gonna increase render time and duration I'm just gonna stick to around 500 frames you can also choose uh, time code instead of frames to have more time specific length uh, for cinematic purposes I'm just gonna stick to the film format which is 24 and click on start so uh, Earth Studio has a very simple editing kind of an interface. So we just have the um, camera output uh, on the right and there's a map on the left. So if I just move this uh, gizmo on the map, you can see it's linked to the camera output on the left, on the right. Uh, and below is the timeline where you can see your uh, keyframes and the left to it is all the camera camera settings and parameters you have you can add additional uh, attributes just using this button and then going into menu and then scrolling whatever you need so uh so let's just uh go to new york let's type new york in this one so here's new york and you can just zoom in just like you zoom in a traditional google map just using your scroll wheel so I'm just gonna zoom over here and the street I'm gonna pick is actually the Broadway Street so let's just center it and I'm gonna grab this camera gizmo and just put it around the Broadway and let's zoom in a little bit and by pressing alt and left click I can orbit the map that's what it is and I'll adjust the camera a little bit more. So I'm going to start with like really end of the street and just pull back. You can also adjust uh, longitude and latitude if you want to adjust the position of the camera more precisely. Uh, so it's going to be like that. I'm going to reduce the altitude so it's 150 meters right now so if you reduce it just go down a little bit like that should be good enough I can go a little bit further cool uh, so I'm happy with this position right now so I'm just gonna click this keyframe button so it creates 
the keyframes on longitude, latitude, and altitude. And also, I'll click the panel. And let's just go to the very end of the sequence. And let's just grab our camera and just pull back all the way through. Like that. And hit the keyframe button again. So there you go. We have our sweet little camera animation. So I think in the end we are getting obscured by this building. So I'm just going to adjust the camera a little bit like that. And then click on the keyframe button again. Perfect. So in order to get that uh, roll motion, um, let me just fire up the video again. So this um, camera roll. So basically it's an experimental attribute in Google Studio right now, which you can access using this attribute button. So just click on it and then go to roll, which is experimental. Just click on that. So you get your roll values. So I'm just going to set a keyframe on that and uh, I'm going to change the degree over here. So as you can see now we are rotating the camera. So I think that much is good. And let's go to the end of the sequence and pull it back to the default. So now we have this camera roll going on. Uh, another cool little thing which you can access in Google Earth Studio is uh, the time of day. So if you go into add attributes and scroll down to time of the day and check it, uh, you'll have a time attribute. So you can change the time and then you can change, you can see the lighting changing in your viewport. So that's 10 o'clock, 10.30, and then as you go, it goes from afternoon and then goes to the little, to the evening, like that. So I think I'm just going to stick to around, let's see, uh, like 10.30 in the morning, which gives me a little bit of uh, this um, nice s warm light effect, which I like. Um, maybe I can go a little bit further like that you can experiment with uh, other attributes as well like um, there's a camera target options if you check that you get a target um, in your camera which you can move around like if you want to focus on just one building throughout the animation you can do that and then Google studio would try to keep that in frame most of the time uh, for this video, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna use that, so I'm just gonna turn that off. So camera target off. There you go. So we can just go ahead with this. Um, so we're gonna jump to nuke. Um, we're gonna speed this up a little bit more and add some uh, motion blur to it, and also tweak the sky a little bit. So to render this, all you have to do is hit this uh, render tab. Just click on this render button and uh, so it will show your animation over here and with the watermark. So let's just render all the frames and I'm just going to render in HD and you can choose where you want the watermark to be. Let's just go to be bottom right and that's it. I'm just going to say start render and we'll be back when it's done and yeah it's gonna render jpeg sequence i think that's the only option you have right now so i'll be back when it's done all right so we are in nuke now and uh, let's uh, import our sequence so i'll go to the folder say open so i have my sequence over here oh i don't know why nuke is doing that i think there's a gui issue anyway so the very first thing we have to do is uh, grade this sky a little bit. I think it's too cartoonish looking, so I'll just grade it down a little bit. So let's make a quick gear 
and I'll just use the luminance and pull a quick key just for this guy like that create a grade and grade down this guy Grade down the sky a little bit, reduce the blue in it. Yeah, that should do it. Uh, the other thing I like to do this is too much blue in the midtones, so I'll just go into the color correction node, and I'll reduce the blue a little bit, and also lift up the shadows because I think it's a bit too contrasty. Maybe reduce the blue a little bit more, just like that. All right. Next, uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll do our retime. We'll speed it up by five times. So using a retime node, I'll speed it up five times, which gives us uh, some motion blur. But we'll we'll be using our uh, nukes vector generator for the motion blur. So let's just. Uh, set the filter to none. Cool. Uh, so for motion blur, what I'll do is uh, a vector generator, which will generate our vectors. And let's do that. And just check in the motion channel, we have some vectors. So yep, it's working. Now I'll shuffle copy these motion vectors into the stream and also shuffle out the vectors first. So everything is in the RGB channel. And from one, I want to use the red, green, and blue, which is the motion channel. And I want to copy it into the uh, motion channel of the two input. So motion, motion, and if you see the motion channel of the two input, I have the vectors in there. So now I'll just put a vector blur. Oh, there you go. So now vector blur uh, in the vector blur set the UV to motion, and oh, so the input needs an alpha. So I'll just create a shuffle and white out my alpha should be fine and let's go with two it's too much oh, 20 <laughs> let's go with two uh, maybe 2.5 and if you see it with our read time it's gonna give you the motion that we need I think we can go a bit higher we can also uh, export cameras from Google Studio and uh, use that camera to figure out the motion blur. But that uh, the camera is exported in a different format. So you have to bring that format into a different program. I think After Effects supports it. And then you export the camera from After Effects to uh, FBX or an Alembic. And then you import that in Nuke. It's a bit of, bit of a lengthy process, but uh, um, surely in future I'll try to cover it. So I'll pause the video until it caches and I'll be back when we have the full cache. Yeah, so it has uh, finished caching and uh, as you can see we have added motion blur to our clip. Um, so yeah, uh, this was a very short introduction to Google Studio. I think uh, it can be a very useful tool for uh, small short films or independent filmmakers where there's not enough budget um, to shoot a backplate for a car or a car sequence or something like that. Um, yes, there's no dynamic range. Um, it's it's uh, mostly in sRGB space. Uh, there's not enough texture control, but you can still get away with it if you use it for a far uh, backplate, like a f like for driving shots and stuff like that. Uh, I hope you found this uh, tutorial very useful and interesting. Uh, my name is Brangel and thanks for watching.